Although it is generally treated with open heart surgery, heart valve dysfunction can cause serious heart failure. But what if you are unable to undergo major surgery due to other health concerns? Hello, this is ScopeCare. We are raising health awareness one step at a time. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and switch on notifications to ensure that you do not miss any of our incredible videos. Let's get started with the topic for today. There are various disorders that hinder one or more of the heart's valves from functioning properly to ensure appropriate circulation. These disorders are referred to as heart valve disease Heart valve illness, if left untreated, can hurt one's quality of life and can even be fatal. Heart valves can be repaired or replaced surgically in many situations, restoring normal function and allowing a return to normal activities. What is heart valve disease exactly? Within your heart, there are four valves. The mitral, tricuspid, aortic, and pulmonic valves are the four valves that make up the heart. The valves ensure that blood flows through the heart in just one way. The valves are made up of little flaps of tissue called leaflets that open to allow blood to flow forward through the heart for half of each heartbeat and close to prevent blood from going backward. Two of the valves leaflets also feature stiff, fibrous tissue strands termed chordate tendinae that connect the valves to the muscles inside the ventricle walls. The chordate tendinae and papillary muscles stabilize the leaflets against blood flowing backward. When the valves in your heart don't work correctly, it's called heart valve disease. Rheumatic fever, congenital abnormalities, degradation over time, and infection are all common causes of valve disease. Valvular stenosis or valvular insufficiency can cause this. Let us now discuss the signs and symptoms of heart valve disease. The heart beats faster to compensate for the lower blood flow when the heart valves begin to fail. Valve disease can advance to the point that symptoms like shortness of breath, palpitations, edema or swelling of the ankles or abdomen, weakness or dizziness, unexplained rapid weight gain, and chest discomfort appear. A physical examination may indicate fluid in the lungs, an enlarged heart or a heart murmur, which is the sound produced by blood flowing through a stenotic or faulty valve. Several medical diagnostics can also detect heart valve disease. For example, an echocardiogram or a cardiac ultrasound. Sound waves from a handheld wand inserted on your chest or transmitted down your throat create a moving image of the heart's valves and chambers. Cardiac catheterization or angiography is another test. Contrast dye put via a catheter in your arm or leg produces X-ray movies of the coronary arteries, heart chambers, and heart valves. The electrocardiogram, also known as the EKG or ECG, is another test. This is a graph paper recording of the heart's electrical activity utilizing small electrode patches placed on the skin. Other tests, including transesophageal echocardiography, exercise stress echocardiogram, radionuclide scans, and magnetic resonance imaging may be employed. Your doctor can track the progression of your valve disease and assist you in making treatment options by repeating tests over time. Medications can be used to treat this. Medications may be provided to alleviate your symptoms and reduce the risk of additional damage. Following valve surgery, some drugs may be discontinued. Others might require you to take them for the rest of your life. Before you leave the hospital, your doctor or nurse will go over your medication information with you. If necessary, surgery or invasive techniques can be used to treat it. Heart valve disease is a mechanical problem with the leaflets opening and shutting, and surgery to repair and replace the valve may be required in the future. The surgeon can typically repair your defective valve without using artificial elements with heart valve repair. 
Valve Repair has several advantages, including a lower risk of infection, a reduced requirement for lifelong blood thinners, and the preservation of heart muscle strength. The procedure for replacing a heart valve entails removing the old valve and stitching a new one to the annulus of the old one. A variety of mechanical and biological valves are available for the new valve. When repair is not possible, these replacement valves can give enough function. Nevertheless, certain drugs may be required depending on the type of valve utilized. The kind of valve illness, the severity of the damage, your age, and your medical history all influence whether medicinal treatment, surgical repair, or surgical replacement is recommended. Before surgery, the surgeon and cardiologist will usually know which treatment option is best. The surgeon should also decide when the valve is visible during operation. Valve surgery is frequently paired with other treatments such as multiple valve procedures, bypass surgery, or atrial fibrillation surgery to treat a patient's cardiac problem fully. But what if surgery is not for you? All right, friends, before we get into some options other than surgery, if you appreciate what you've seen so far, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. If open surgery is not for you, then maybe mitral clip is for you. The mitral valve clip method is a non-surgical way to repair your mitral heart valve. Although this method was designed for patients who were too unwell or at high risk for open heart surgery, it is now used by many people with mild to moderate mitral regurgitation symptoms. The treatment is carried out percutaneously, which means that the healthcare provider enters your heart by a vein in your groin. The mitral valve clip device is a small metal clip coated in polyester fabric that is placed into the leg and guided up to your mitral valve via a long, flexible tube called a catheter. In what is known as an edge-to-edge -edge repair, the clip is attached to two locations of the damaged valve. More blood can flow in the appropriate direction as a result of this. Although a mitral valve clip can dramatically reduce mitral valve regurgitation, also known as mitral valve insufficiency, it seldom completely removes the disease. However, patients may notice a significant improvement in their symptoms just a few days following the treatment. In most cases, the mitral valve clip surgery is scheduled and performed as an outpatient procedure. The complete procedure usually takes one to three hours, although it may take longer depending on the case's intricacy. The GDS AccuCinch system is another alternative. It's a percutaneous device that cinches the subvalvular mitral annulus to reduce its size until the backward flow of blood via the mitral valve is corrected. It's inserted through an artery in the patient's leg. This device works in the same way as surgical mitral repair by altering the shape of the mitral apparatus to reduce mitral regurgitation. The GDS AccuCinch system can also appropriately size the mitral opening by taking regurgitation measures in the beating heart during the treatment, which cannot be done while the patient is on a bypass machine. Percutaneous rings are another option. Mitral valves can be repaired with rings implanted through the groin or neck veins to help the valve seal more tightly. Currently, they are only offered in clinical studies. Transcatheter mitral valve replacement, or the TMVR, is another option. A surgeon inserts a hollow catheter into your heart through a vein in your groin during the surgery. The new valve is then inserted and expanded directly into the failing mitral valve. The FDA has not yet approved this procedure for broad usage. Four of these valves are currently being examined in clinical trials across the United States, according to Dr. Capedia. The Neocord system, which is an artificial muscle support valve, is another option for folks who would prefer to avoid open surgery. To remedy this deficiency, the Neocord system employs artificial muscles. Without the use of a heart-lung machine, these cords can be applied. Through a small incision in the chest, they are put on the diseased area of the mitral valve. Dr. Michael Borger, director of the Cardiovascular Institute, 
led a national study of this device in early 2017. The Neocord system has been utilized successfully in many hundreds of patients in Europe, Dr. Borger notes. This groundbreaking treatment will soon be offered in the United States for patients with a prolapsed or aberrant mitral leaflet who also have MR. Overall, valve disease is a serious issue that should not be overlooked. For years, you may feel fine and not notice any difficulties. However, symptoms such as angina or chest pain, syncope, which can be a fainting or rapid loss of consciousness, and dyspnea, which means breathing trouble or discomfort, can reduce life expectancy and quality of life. Without therapy, only half of the persons with severe valve disease, such as aortic stenosis, live two years, and only 20% live five years. According to the evidence, most people's health and quality of life improve with effective therapy. There are dangers associated with any surgery. Because each patient is unique, your doctor and healthcare team will explore your treatment choices with you and recommend the best course of action. People who have had their heart valves damaged, repaired, or replaced are more likely to develop a valve infection, also known as infective endocarditis. Which one do you think is the best option? That concludes today's video. Please subscribe to the channel and switch on alerts to receive updates of new uploads. Scope Care here, and we'll see you in the next video.